I don't really use the F that much. It's a bit pretentious. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, it's quite exciting to be here doing this. Uh, I wrote about the statutory instrument about a year ago, and it was denied by the outgoing government at the time. And uh, at the time, everyone just accepted that that was it. And it's interesting to see that here we are today. Um, Copyright, uh, most of you will be aware that, uh, well, not, not all of you will be aware, but I did a bit of research on this and I've been always struck by the fact that, or not a fact, but a, an idea that copyright law has its origins in Ireland back in the 6th century uh, when Colm Kill uh, allegedly copied a book uh, from an abbot called Finian. And uh, the High King of Ireland at the time uh, judged uh, that every, to every cow it's calf, to every book it's copy. I don't know if that's the actual uh, quote, but uh, what I really mean to say is that it's uh, a couple of thousand, a thousand years later, and we're still talking about copyright. Uh, we're now in the connected age. We have so many industries here in Ireland, Facebook, Google. Uh, we, we, we talk a lot about cloud computing. We uh, all use social networks. Uh, and you know, if you haven't been living under a rock or anything, you'll know that a lot of people in this country are employed in this area, and a lot of people hope to be employed in this area. So uh, to have the panel discussion today, I, you know, Minister uh, Sean Sherlock has kindly agreed to do this. Uh, I was kind of struck by his decision to do this because I have been following the copyright debate around the world. And to my knowledge, I don't think any minister has granted this level of access. Now, I know it's been a fiery debate so far, but I think we should respect that and uh, make this a good debate <laughs> that at least we can walk away uh, with a bit of knowledge uh, or a bit of direction as to where we're going with this. The statutory instrument has been signed. There's a copyright review underway, and I'd be keen to see where that ends up. Uh, I would like to see this be a country that is at the pinnacle of the digital age, that fosters industries and fosters employment. So um, the, pan the, the format of this is the minister uh, and the other panelists are going to each, each have three minutes to speak. Um, at that point, then, we'll introduce a panel discussion that will take about 20 minutes. And the last 20 minutes will be for the rest of you to uh, throw in questions. So I, I would say this is an opportunity. I don't think a similar opportunity really has existed anywhere else, so I really wouldn't make use of it. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to bring up the minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Um, can I just uh, start by, by thanking uh, Sean Nichols, um, who I think should stand up and identify himself if he's here somewhere. There he is, he's hiding. This all started um, from a debate that myself and Sean were having online through, uh, through Twitter. Um, some of you may know that uh, I have had you know, various debates with people online about this whole process, and I tried to maybe get people to say, well, look, if you wanted to organize something, you know, let, let's do it, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll attend. And, and Sean got the ball rolling in very short notice last week, and, and here we are today. So I just want to say fair play to Sean uh, you know, for organizing this, and to thank Michael John and the guys here uh, in the Science Gallery, which I think is a, it's an amazing space, and I think it's very conducive to the type of debate that we want to have here today. I also want to thank uh, Paul and Tom as well uh, you know, for coming along, and to Simon. Um, can I say, Simon, I, I'm not, I, I just want to extend the hand of friendship to you, okay? And that, that we can try and move on maybe now uh, and move this into a more maybe consensus-driven space. Um, I think the debate so far perhaps has been one where we've all had the swords uh, maybe drawn and maybe we need to, and I would acknowledge this, that maybe now we need to put away the swords back into the scabbards and see how we can... Uh, we can move on in this debate. Because I think ultimately, in, in the very short space I, I have, in the three to five minutes, we have what we call the consultation paper. And really, this is an independent process. Uh, Owen O'Dell and, and his team, uh, Stephen Headley and Patricia McGovern, have come up with 86 questions that will form potentially the basis of how we legislate for this space uh, in this country you know, for the future. And there's a little bit of a, philosoph a, a philosophical debate as well, if you, if you will, because we have to ask ourselves, what kind of internet do we want? Uh, or how can we remove any barriers to innovation? That's the key question. I know that there are people here who will say that the signing of the statutory instrument moved us backwards. But the advice on that was that we were relying on two attorneys general for the advice in relation to the Charlton judgment, and it restored us to a position that pertained in 2000 with the signing of the Copyright uh, Act. 
But now what we're trying to do uh, is to move into a space through the copyright and consultation process where, for example, we look at things like you know, the establishment of a copyright council. Uh, we look at things like fair use. We ask ourselves, you know, through the 86 questions, where exactly do, do we want to be as a country? And if it is the case, and it's an independent process, that recommendations are made by Ono Dell for, you know, for legislative change, then we in government have to take account of, of that because it's based on the consultation process and then move into that space. But we also have to have regard, no matter what piece of legislating you're doing, that you have to have regard to the fact uh, that you have to be uh, adherent to any EU legislation uh, that is there. Now, it could be that the recommendations that arise from this consultation will put us way ahead of the curve in terms of where we want to go. Uh, but ultimately, uh, if that is the case, then it would be for us to try and uh, you know, basically try and influence the legislation at, a, at, at an EU level. So really today, for me personally, uh, what, what I want to do is to ensure that, we, you know, we, the copyright consultation review becomes the, the, the working document, if you will, by which we, we can move the, the debate forward, that everybody here on this platform and in this room and everybody within the Twitter sphere, uh, you know, engages in a way on this one. I can see by the smirks on some people's faces already that there's probably some interesting tweets coming in <laughs> <laughs> about me, okay? So uh, um, I, I, I have a fairly thick skin. I'm a politician, okay? Uh, so, you know, I, I never take anything that's said about me uh, personally in this space. I, you know, I, and I will engage with everybody. In fact, I've endeavoured to try and engage with everybody as best I can uh, on, on this one. I'm going to keep persevering with this one no matter what, and I'll take what's coming to me. Uh, but really, I do believe that because we are a small country, I think the time is now for me to take stock. I've learned from the past number of months that I think the way to drive legislation forward uh, is to engage the online community. We need to move beyond the traditional uh, methods of consultation through advertising in the traditional media and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, we need to, to, to in, embrace, if you will, the online community and, and, and get you guys as part of the consultation process. So that's why the Irish Internet Association have a, a process going around the 86 questions. Uh, my department, DJEI, uh, has a process around the 86 questions. But most importantly, Onodell, uh, hashtag CRC12, uh, has a process, uh, you know, of, of engagement around these questions as well. So. Really, that's my introduction. We have to, you know, we have to ask ourselves what kind of a, a philosophical debate uh, overshadows this. Do we want a libertarian space uh, where everything is free and copyright ceases to exist because that school of thought exists? It is a legitimate school of thought if that is what your belief is. Do we say then that you must have complete uh, regard only to the rights of copyright holders? That is a legitimate argument if that is your belief system. Or do we try to steer uh, a middle ground between you know, protecting cultural, creative, music, gaming, you know, or any types of innovations that exist within the online community and try to strike a balance between the right to ownership and intellectual property and copyright and, and the right then to the freedoms of access to the internet uh, that, that are inherent and are now laid down uh, in you know, the Charter of Fundamental Rights and so on and are inherent within legislation. So that's really my, my, my starting point. I'm conscious of the time and I'm conscious that people want to speak. So I thank you. I thank you for coming, really, because um, it's, it's, I'm a bit nervous, I'll be honest with you, but it's, it's good to be here. And thank you very much, OK? Um, I'd like to call up Paul Durant, uh, he's General Manager of the Internet Service Provider Association of Ireland and also runs the hotline. So. Thanks very much, Sean. Um, I'd also like to thank Sean for uh, getting this uh, debate organised today and I hope that the discussions afterwards will be very fruitful. I'm going to do something which I don't do very often, which is actually read from a script as I've got three minutes and I want to make sure I get the points in. So unfortunately I have to uh, resort to these things. Um, basically, the problem that we as the internet service providers 
industry, that is the people who provide you access and hosting and also third party services, felt about the SI was that it increased rather than decreased the uncertainty for business investment in innovative online digital services in this country. And that's because rather than clarifying the law, it has further clouded the fundamental principles around the liability for third party content. So the Principles that we have, really, I feel, will carry forward into the debate which is happening on the consultation. And certainly, we are, as an industry, putting in our views to that consultation. I feel what has exacerbated the fact is that we have a very wealthy and established reproduction businesses sitting in the kind of the sidelines as well. And that's the music recording, printed books, newspapers, films, and many other kind of rights-based uh, holders, businesses as well, that many of which are seeing their businesses currently in decline. But this is a natural turnover that you get in businesses. And it's been probably assisted to some degree uh, by the fact of te technological evolution as well. And unfortunately, these companies perceive digital business models rather as a threat, uh, rather than an opportunity, which we believe they should do, and quite often blame the internet service providers and the internet for the decline in their revenues over the last numbers of years. Let me emphasize from the outset that ISPAI, sorry, I'll say that again, ISPAI, my organization I represent, firmly supports the rights of artists to earn a living from their creative works. And I think this is very fundamental. We also therefore believe that if people are pirating those copyrighted works, be it by traditional means or by uploading uh, these works on the internet and so distributing them without agreed reward from the artist. And I do say permission there because there's a whole lot of different complex models that can be used for that reward. And if they are doing that without the permission of the artist, well then they really should be prosecuted under copyright laws. And when it's the position permission of the artist or that permission given through uh, agents of that artist doesn't really matter. We also feel that there's a fundamental principle here which we'd like to see debated in the, consult, in the uh, consultation that's going on. And that is that fundamentally those who commit a crime uh, should be basically those who are held responsibility for it. Just like any other criminal activity, online piracy should be subject to due process of law before a court and it is those who commit the crime directly that should be prosecuted under these copyright laws. Um, unfortunately, what has tended to happen, because that tends to be a little bit complicated or perceived to be complicated into the in, in the internet world, the rights holders are increasingly lobbying for and also being given frameworks to sue or, as I put it, punish through injunction, uh, legitimate internet service providers and intermediary businesses that are actually innocent of any wrongdoing uh, and are providing a service which unfortunately can be misused. And so there are alleged illicit activities of customers which we have. Um, this again is further confused because the copyright directive which the law must adhere to and which this whole problem about the SI arose on um, stems from a directive which was really put together, well, the debates would have started on it over 10 years ago, at a time when social networks weren't even invented. Facebook wasn't around, even its Bebos and things like that weren't around. And many other forums were quite small and not well understood. So the whole view was a very simplistic view of what an intermediary is. And so the law tends to refer to intermediaries. Um, and we feel that what has happened is by having this SI, which simply copies what the directive says, that it's basically brought that uh, vagueness through into Irish law by referring back to the directive. Unfortunately, we feel that this uh, statutory instrument wasn't really needed and was in some ways maybe a missed opportunity where directly the um, definition of an intermediary could have been better described in law, but I hope that through the consultation, this is one of the things that will be worked on very rigorously, and we will have a better view of this whole idea of the intermediary that's in a whole chain of intermediaries that connects the source or the user of the internet to the source of the material that they require, and that, that this will be used in a way that if there is an intermediary who is culpable, that they can actually be brought to uh, bear under the, the law. 
The problem with this SI right now is that kind of clarification, which should have been given in the law, has basically been thrown back to the courts. So we're now into the situation of everything being decided on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, and this really gives the uncertainty which I mentioned at the very start. And really what ISPs are worried about are test cases being brought in this country, not only for incidents in this country, but as a precedent within the whole of the European Union. And basically it's the huge cost involved of defending these, which is what ISPs fear. So innovative startups, most medium-sized companies, and indeed most of the ISPs I represent, be they hosting suppliers or access suppliers, simply do not have the funds to kind of defend this sort of thing. So they're likely to keel over to say, OK, well, we'll, we'll just have to live with this. And that is not good for you, the users. And just to final, uh, final point I'd like to make, that really we need certainty in this country. This is kind of particularly needed as in this time of recession, we need certainty in an environment where we're trying to retain the multinationals that we have here. We also want to encourage new innovative digital businesses. And also we want to encourage this much used term now, the location of cloud computing services. So I just ask you to think about what cloud computing services are. They are really services which deal by definition with third party content. And we need to have a very precise environment to help establish those businesses here in Ireland to provide jobs for the people who are coming out of colleges right now. And that is the position that ISPAI has and what we will be certainly uh, bringing forward to the consultation as it develops over the next number of months. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to have Tom Murphy up next, uh, director and founder of Boards. I, I'm particularly interested to hear his, his views because uh, he is somebody who is hosting content or has built an, an, an engine for hosting content and people's views and people can share content that way. So I'd be very interested to hear your views. Um, my name is Tom Murphy and depending on who you listen to, in the Senate I am a subverter of the state. And in the doll, I am a keyboard warrior. Normally, I don't face people. I usually write this sort of stuff, so forgive me if I'm not a great public speaker. Uh, I have a few points to make. Um, we live in the crack between you, the public, and the ability to publish. We are a platform on which you're able to put your thoughts and words. Uh, we have some issues with the copyright law as it stands at the moment. I'd like to enumerate them. The first is that it's vague in the extreme. There are no details as to what's considered a distinct uh, breach of the law. Um, it isn't clear even if we'd be given notice whether we would be dragged into an injunction situation or not. The judge has been told to consider the possibility that we should be informed. Uh, two, the mere threat that allowing a user to post content could th and that content could land a service in court will ensure that that service never exists. If what you say could get me into court tomorrow, there's no way in hell I'm going to let you say it. That is the basis of this problem, is that we stand in between you and your ability to publish, and that as a uh, shareholder, I must protect my shareholders, and so I am split. My loyalties lie between my shareholders and your freedom of speech. It's not fair. This is akin to letting the Bank of Ireland take proceedings against national toll roads when a getaway driver uses the M50 after robbing a bank. It's not the toll road's fault that they built a road which was used for an illegal purpose. This will kill innovation. It scares away foreign investment. And number five is that this won't even work. This hasn't worked, it has not worked anywhere else, and it will not work here. Now, I'd like to make some rebuttal points as well uh, as to what's been said already, particularly by the minister. Uh, the first is that the minister con uh, continuously uh, conflates the issue of the CRC and the SI. Uh, the CRC is an important process, and I would uh, echo him and say that you should get involved in it, you should make a submission to it, and if you have any interest in copyright, you should be uh, clued into what Owen O'Dell uh, and the CRC people are doing there. However, I also want to make it clear that Owen sent this tweet to us to, uh, a couple of days ago saying, hope that Sean Sherlock and Tom and the ISPA and SOPA Ireland uh, keep the CRC distinct from, uh, and that's the SI. Okay? This is the terms of reference uh, of the uh, CRC itself. We'd say, finally, we note that Irish law does not yet provide a means by which 
uh, right holders can get an injunction against an ISP whose customers are infringing copyright. However, there is a parallel consultation about this issue, and we will not address it further in the present review. I attended the meeting on Saturday morning where they would not let me speak about that SI, and they would not let anybody else uh, address the point either. It is outside their terms of reference, so do not be fooled by the fact that the CRC is happening and that, that somehow that will address the SI. It will not. Uh, next slide. Now, uh, we've been given the idea that somehow the intermediaries aren't really at risk here, that somehow, the, the, as the, the, uh, the minister has said, that um, uh, is implied in, in tweets directly to me and in the debate, uh, that an injunction may not be sought against an intermediary, intermediary for the links that are on the, on the site. Well, this is straight from the SI itself. It's the explanatory note. And it says, these regulations clarified that an injunction may be sought against an intermediary. OK, that's... that's <laughs> I wish it wasn't so funny. <laughs> um, the third uh, point is that uh, the minister has, uh, and fair enough, uh, attempted to bring everybody together in some sort of uh, compromise, and that we will all sit around a, a, a kind of a, a round table and work this out politely. Uh, I would love to live in the, in the world that the minister lives in because that's just not what happens and it is not what has been happening. Um, so I, as evidence towards that, I, I'd like to show you this. Um, these are the minutes of a meeting between Irma and uh, the minister. There's four people at this meeting. One is Willie Kavanagh, who is the chairman of Irma. Two is uh, Willie Ryan, who is the COO of an entertainment uh, industry and a lawyer. So by that we can, uh, I suppose, deduct that the minister doesn't have a problem with all lawyers. Um, the, <laughs> the third is Eamon Lard, who is a, a, a centre of, uh, he's sorry, in charge of, of copyright for the country, more or less. Um, sorry, for patents for the country. And the fourth is the minister. Now, there's nothing wrong with the minister meeting uh, interest bodies. Uh, this morning I had a meeting with the minister myself. Uh, boards requested it. He uh, gave us plenty of his time and, and we talked about it. Uh, what is a problem is uh, the parts that I want to bring your attention to. Uh, these are these. These are two paragraphs from the minutes of that meeting between those four men. The first is very interesting simply from my point of view, um, because it shows that absolutely nobody has been kicked off Aircom permanently due to the copyright infringements. Twelve people have been given uh, letters uh, uh, disconnecting them for a week, and 29,000 people have had some sort of vague finger-wagging. I'm not sure what happened with them. But uh, this was seen as very effective deterrent against illegal downloading. I don't know who sees that as a very de effective deterrent against uh, internet downloading, because I, I sure as hell don't anymore. Um, if you're ever worried that you're going to get kicked off Aircom, you won't, all right? Um, <laughs> the second point is much, much more sinister. Um, Mr. And I'm going to read it out because it's important, uh, and I'm about to get kicked off. Um, Mr. Kavanagh said that the wording of the SI as published, and Mr. Kavanagh is the head of uh, IRMA, the Irish Record and Media Association, Music Association, said that the wording of the SI as published was ideal from their perspective, and he urged the minister to introduce the SI immediately. He said that Irma had two options, meet the minister and see could they would get moving on the SI, or alternatively go to the route of litigation. They chose to meet the minister first. If you take two words from this meeting today, if you take two words, be they ideal and first. Ideal and first, because right after that, Mr. Kavanagh, who is also CEO of EMI Ireland, did go the legal route and sued Ireland, started a, a legal court case against Ireland. Uh, so this is a dual uh, approach by the same person in charge of two indus uh, industries, two organisations. One is try and be a good cop with the, with the minister and say, oh, we want our SI signed now, exactly as it is. And two is, otherwise, we'll sue you. All right? And that's what happened. That word first is a cocked gun at the head of Ireland. Good night. Thank you. OK. Uh, I'd like to bring on Simon McGar, solicitor. <laughs> Simon McGar, solicitor, who uh, blogs and tweets and all this stuff. So. It's very nice to be able to speak to you all here today. <laughs> uh, 
We're all here because what we're discussing is important. Um, and what we're discussing isn't a copyright law. Uh, as a lawyer, I can tell you uh, a secret. Law is very boring. Legislation is very dull. And draft SIs and consultative documents are not fun. Uh, we're not meant to admit that in public, but that is true. What is important is the fact that the copyright laws that we live inside are a reflection of our society's uh, decision about how to reward and restrict creativity. They're a reflection of our culture. They're uh, a vocalization of what we think collectively our culture should be. Um, unlike almost everybody on the panel here, I don't represent a commercial interest. In fact, uh, the minister pointed out, I represent no interest but my own. Um, well, that's citizens for you. <laughs> we, we collectively represent our, our interests uh, when we agree amongst ourselves that we will share a common position. Um, but individually, we, we each should hold our own positions. We should have our own interests. And my interest here is that the debate in copyright is not lost between uh, pulling between different commercial interests. Uh, Tom uh, has a commitment to free speech, but he has a legal commitment to his shareholders as a uh, director, and he recognizes that. Um, the ISPAI have a, a legal commitment to their members. I, I, I say that, um, well, and of course EMI have a commitment to their shareholders. Each one of them should pursue their interests, but their interests do not define the public interest. And I say that there is a broad middle, and a consensus between commercial interests is not the same thing as the public interest. A process which seeks to have the commercial interests come together around a table and hammer out a deal is not necessarily a deal that's good for us. We're citizens. It's a republic. And I'm here today simply to say on the, on the podium here uh, that uh, uh, if we are going to discuss our, uh, our, our culture, that we should start from the position of saying it is our culture, that we should make the decisions as to what that should uh, involve, that um, there is a, a copyright review uh, uh, committee uh, currently running, um, but it is extremely technical and very difficult to, um, to get involved in it. Uh, the minister referred a couple of times to the 82 question questionnaire. Well, I can tell you, I couldn't get to the 82nd question. Uh, but there's no obligation on us to go through the questionnaire. We don't have to. We can make our submissions ourselves. I propose eventually, uh, within the period, to make a submission, to put it up on the internet. I invite you to read it, to make your own decisions as to whether or not you'd like to agree with it. Sign on, if you like, and, uh, and it will go in as a submission. But don't forget that that committee uh, will make its submission to the department. And it's inside the department that the law will be drafted. And, um, I think, I think uh, the experience in Britain shows that between uh, a committee uh, making recommendations, no matter how well-intentioned, and uh, a department writing laws, strange things occur. So, I stand here today only to say to you, this is our culture that's being addressed. This is our society that's being discussed. This is not uh, hammering out a deal between two sides. Those sides are a sideshow. We're the broad middle. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank Simon, thank Simon for sticking to his time, actually. That was brilliant. <laughs> I suppose uh, to start with, I mean, I, I thought it was quite interesting, this distinction between the CRC and the statutory instrument. Uh, I was wondering if you'd like to rebuttal on that one. Yeah, um, well, I think Tom was quite robust uh, in, in what he was saying. Um, if you take Tom's uh, business model, and we discussed this earlier, um, if you take the Copyright Act that pertains to the year 2000, and then you fast forward to the Charlton Judgment, and then the, the statutory instrument. The statutory instrument, so as to remove any doubt around the Charlton Judgment, removed us, or, or, or re restored that very same position. We didn't introduce any new policy. So, so lest anybody say that, uh, how would I put it to you, 
Well, let me put it another way. What we need to do now is we need to reflect the fact that Tom's business has grown exponentially in that period of time, but the legislation uh, has stayed largely the same. And then you have to have regard now as well to certain protections that exist for intermediaries in, in light of, we'll say, the SABAM versus Scarlet Judgment and so on and so forth. You have to have regard to the you know, e-commerce directive, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, which sets, sets down certain protections. So, look, in fairness, the, the point is made by Tom, and I, I will acknowledge publicly that, and, and Paul makes the same point, uh, if somebody transgresses through the medium of boards.ie, should boards.ie be held responsible for that transgression? Is yeah, essentially. Simon, Simon, like you yeah, but, but just can I just finish it off? So, so <coughs> the, the challenge for us from a legislative point of view then is how do you. How do you remove the barrier to innovation, or how do you legislate, or is it possible then to legislate such that boards.ie does not become, uh, doesn't have to put away a, a war chest of hundreds of thousands of euros to potentially defend uh, spurious cases where, where claims come in? And that's the challenge. So uh, this is why we're here today, is, to, is to, to, to hear what is being said in relation to that and to try and address that in some way, shape, or form. Now, if people argue that that's not strictly within the, 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 the CRC, the CRC uh, was framed by Owen O'Dell, but the CRC, if you look at question 86 of the CRC, you know, it says, you know, have we missed anything, is the question. What have we missed? That opens up a space for anybody to make a submission on anything relating to issues that are not covered by the questions. It doesn't matter that you don't have a technical knowledge around the questions, because not everybody here does, including myself, to be frank about it. But the main thing, well, people may laugh, but I, I mean, I, you know, not everybody's going to have a complete deep knowledge about the 86 questions that, that apply here. The history is exactly what you suggested people do if they want to express their opinion, that they plough through those 86 questions. You haven't done them yourself? No, no, I, I, I have. Have you answered them? I, no, no, I, I, I have looked at the see, questions. Can we correct them? <laughs> you see, I, I think, I, I don't mind people being facetious, OK? You know, you can be facetious if you want to be, Simon. I'm always okay. facetious. OK. <laughs> well, it doesn't become you, right? And let's kind of... Let's, no, let's no, that is a real question, because, Minister, that's the question no, no. that you responded to people with when, they, when after you signed this SI, no. you said I, that I, I people think, should I go and should now participate... I think you should tone it down. People should participate. I think you should tone it down. I do you? Okay. Do you think I should tone it down? I think you should. Yes, I think you should tone okay, it down. OK, I'm too loud. Okay. Apologies. We will, make, we will make better points if we stay calm. Okay. Very good. All right. Even so, though I shout. <laughs> okay. So, can I just get to number? Quickly, if you would. <laughs> in essence, if people come in with submissions that throw up questions that are not here in the 86 uh, questions, then, then we have to grapple with that. The process has to grapple but with Owen that. Owen is well. being very clear that it is outside the remit of the, of the CRC. And, yeah. and uh, he, it's always the CRC itself. There is that, I mean, I can yeah. put the slide back up if Fair you want. Yeah. But, uh, so I think what you're saying is one thing, and what's being written down is, is something no, else. Because if you look at copyright legislation, I mean, it will be for government ultimately to decide as to what the legislative framework will be, okay? And, and Owen is right to make the distinction. But if you're telling me that within the legislative space you're being absolutely and utterly uh, hindered and, 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 and it doesn't fall within the consultation process... Which it doesn't. Th that's fair enough, but that's, that's, that's arguably semantic because what government still has to do, government still has to grapple with the challenges that you face government as a has business... has failed to legislate here. They have passed the, the duty to legislate onto the judiciary. You had an opportunity to incorporate. You see, you're, the you're, you're living rights. in the past tense, Simon. I because am. The reason, because you're doing it again. No, because the reason the reason we're here today, the reason we're here today, is to now see. I mean, I met with Tom earlier on. Tom set out a very cogent argument to me about the, how his business model has evolved. But the legislation is behind the curve in relation to his business model. And Paul makes this, the point that the IS now find themselves in a position where they have to put away a war chest, if you will, to meet the potential for litigation, so that if two citizens or two competing interests post something and there's a challenge around it or somebody seeks to injunctive relief, they've got to spend a 
potload of money defending those interests. So what that has thrown up for me as a minister is a challenge around, well, how do we address this? Even aside from the consultation process, how do we address it and meet the challenge uh, of, of addressing that? And it's a legitimate question that you pose, and I don't have the answers now, but let's, let's I think, try to be fair, with it. I think people's anger with you, which you're sensing, and is palpable, I, I guess. Yeah. Your anger with you is that you had that chance two months ago and you did not listen. No, that's not true. I mean... You signed, you signed exactly that wording, exactly as it was. You rejected an, an alternative SI that was... Wait, now, you've had your say. Uh, an alternative wording which was put forward by a technical group, which was perfectly reasonable. The argument to say, Europe says we must do this, we must do something. This is something, therefore we must do this. That doesn't stand. Right? Because Europe says you must do this. Now, first of all, Europe said you must uh, enact legislation for injunction. I, I accept that. Right? Europe has also said that we must incorporate the X case into our legislation, and that's been 15 years. Right? So I don't think that we have to rush it through, necessarily. Right? So there wasn't, okay. there, wasn't a, a, any, uh, there wasn't any rush in it, apart from the fact that we were being sued by uh, EMI for not providing this. So that's point one. Point two is that this is Schrodinger's law. Now, you want to talk about uh, the, the reality and the, and the present, and not live in the past and, and, and uh, be here now is that every day myself and my team have to make decisions as to what we allow people to say. That is abhorrent to me as a, as a, a free speech advocate. I hate deciding what it is you can all say. I want you to get sued if you say something bad. I don't care about that. But if you say something good, fine, it should stand. Live and die by your own words. And I've always said from day one on boards, you own your own words. Right. The problem is that we end up with Schrodinger's law. The law doesn't exist until a judge, judge observes it. And its innocence or guilt is decided then. Now, we don't know in advance, so I can't be uh, I, I, compliant with a law that just doesn't exist yet. Now, we don't know what will get us into trouble. We don't know what will cause us to have a, a court case or an injunction to, taken against us. We don't know if uh, allowing somebody to stream their webcam from their, from their bedroom, which happens to be showing the rugby match in the background, uh, is, is, a, is illegal. We don't know if, if linking is illegal, for sure. Right? We don't know that the, 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 uh, all sorts of vagaries, we don't know. Right? So we have to make these decisions. We walk into court, we find out from the judge, the judge goes, no, that's illegal, and it turns out you've broken the law, and in retrospect, you will now be punished for that. That's the way this will work, because we're be the judges are making the decisions as to what is illegal. Now, we have to make those decisions in advance. So we have to make a, a judgment call every day that this is to be stood behind by my company or to not. Now, that's fine when it's company driven by somebody who's as nutty as I am about freedom of speech, but when somebody else is, uh, is behind it, their argument is always going to be in favour of their company. They will always cut where there is no doubt. Because right? uh, as Simon says, I am responsible by law to my shareholders to not put them in danger, not endanger the company. And I've had to, at, at meetings, argue why defending freedom of speech is in the best interest of the company. So, so that's Schrodinger's law that doesn't exist until it, it, it's, it's observed by a, by a judge. That's lethal. It's toxic to, to this industry. I'm going to throw this out to the floor, but Minister, just one mm. a quick answer to that. And then, all right, Paul, you want to say something there? It follows on from that, and one of the reasons why we as the ISPI are, are concerned about the, the statutory mm -hmm. instrument. The fact is, the Minister says in the past, it's not in the past, it's in the present. It is a law that's here now. It'll be a long time that the CRC reports till that gets formulated and drafted as a new law, if it at all, if that's the recommendation. So we're, we're dealing with a space of maybe a number of years still. And in those numbers of years, uh, Tom and his company can get many lawsuits, our members can get lawsuits, as has, as has already happened in the case of Aircom and UPC and uh, possible threats of other ones. Ha have new letters well. come since the statute has been signed? Um, I believe there are, yes. Okay. I'll tell you why there, there won't just, be so many. Sorry. Can I just, yeah. Just, the Copyright Act is, has existed since 2000, okay? So business has, has moved on since then. The law then needs to, to reflect that. On the statutory instrument, uh, on the statutory instrument, we were in a position where we had <coughs> advice from two attorneys general, okay? Now, people will say, people... Okay, for, for some reason think, yes, EMI was suing the state, so therefore we had to move on this SI. People have made that argument online. They've made that argument on Twitter because EMI were coming in. They were a big, powerful vested interest. If you're asking me about the music industry, I think the music industry needs a serious kick in the behind and needs to come into the 21st century. I'm a, you know, a purchaser of music myself, I for do. instance. Okay, but if you look at the, 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 the protections that exist presently, 
you have to make the distinction between the cost that uh, accrues to you in terms of having to defend potential actions versus the principle of being able to seek injunctive relief. Okay, so your business model is compromised by the fact that somebody out there needs, can seek injunctive relief. And the challenge then is how do we, if, if, if it can be done, how do you cut out the middleman, the intermediary, or put protections there for the intermediary such that it, it goes from A uh, you know, to C and that B, the intermediary, is taken out of the loop, well, is what you're suggesting. But can I just say this? Because Sabam versus Scarlet uh, puts in very clear uh, mechanisms around you know, monitoring by ISPs of individual uh, users' usage of the internet, if you will. Uh, so too does the, you know, the Charter of Fundamental Rights and the e-commerce directive give protections to the right of an individual to have free access and to be able to use the internet as well. But the question then is, how do you design an infrastructure around being able to protect copyright if we have all acknowledged that the right to copyright does actually exist? Okay, I'd like to throw it out the floor because we are tight in time. So that guy there. Microphone coming to you. Sorry, Ross McDonough from Metro Herald. Um, a little off the SI for the moment, but can I just ask the minister to explain his uh, thought process in refusing to appear in the panel with uh, Simon and uh, the late night post deadline change of heart? We're moving on. Get, get off that space. We're now into a different space. It's the consultation copyright review paper. With, with respect, Minister, I think it's still an issue because on this you've been accused of you know, making decisions without thinking them through and you changed your mind a couple of hours later about that. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I've been accused of, of, of many things in my political career. It's a relatively short one, uh, you know. But what I will say is that I, I'm, I'm man enough uh, when I make a bad decision, uh, to review it and, and reverse it if necessary. I'm human in that sense. So I'm lucky enough in that I'm not, uh, I'm not dogmatic by nature. So in essence, you know, I, I'm happy to acknowledge where mistakes have been made. You know? So I hope that's fair enough. The yeah. uh, this lady here. <laughs> No, no. But, this lady here is the but, question. But if we look at the copyright legislation to answer that question, like if, if the SI... Uh, why did you not sign the, the alternative that was much better and, and still it gave the injunctive I'll, I'll release? I'll tell you why we didn't sign the alternative, Tom. The, 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 we were given, we relied on the advice of the Attorney General. Was he shown and the alternative? She. She? So it was two of them. Both of yeah. them she? No, there's one Attorney General. Okay, I was referring there are two to him. Attorneys General. Um, okay, uh, go on. So you, okay. you showed... The current is... Did you show it to her? We would have had contact with the office, yes. Did you show the attorney? Did you general? determine the alternative SI? I, I, yes or no? I'm answer. telling you, honestly and truthfully, that we did have regard to the alternative did you show SI. The and if the you SI? look, did you show the if, alternative? If, if you look, uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at Is the that debates a no? in the Are you just saying no in a no, long if you way? Look at, <laughs> listen, I, if you're asking me, did I personally hand? Did the attorney general her, see it? No, the office. Her office did. Her office, I know. Yes, no. The minister speaking. No, no. That's, her office that's did a have regard to it. Her office did have regard to it. That's a politician's answer, if ever there was one. OK, OK, move. Let's... The government doesn't have to follow what the attorney general This lady here has a question. Quite a lot of attorneys general suggesting at a previous referendum something about maybe there was something as stu uh, uh, stew there. OK, question, the question from the floor. Hi, uh, my name is Angela Dorgan. I'm director of First Music Contact, and we nationally resource about 16,000 musicians, artists, and original copyright holders. Uh, their interests lie in the middle area as well. Not all of them are uh, represented by Irma or individual <coughs> record companies. I suppose one of my um, comments would be an observation to the minister, and could you please um, make the distinction between the music industry and the record industry? They're two yeah. very different animals, and the music industry innovatively has moved on in leaps and bounds over since the last copyright law. Um, my other is, um, I think I've lost this, yeah, but I might project. Uh, my other question is a question I asked on Twitter, a question uh, that's been asked on boards, and a question that's come up again today. No matter who is consulted during the CRC process, it doesn't sound, and, and, and please prove us all wrong, it doesn't sound like you listen to it anyway. 
and that would be a huge worry. Okay. Um, just on the distinction between you know the the disparate community that is the music community, um, I, I would have shared a platform, for instance, with Pledge Music, and and so they've created a completely innovative business model around how how they sell music, if you will. So I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm in tune with... I, I think it's an important distinction. The record yeah, industry I, okay. has a vested interest that you've listened to. The music industry in its whole is live music and recording. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. It's, it's important to make that distinction. Okay. And individual musicians. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I do, but I, I may have listened to the music industry, but the ISPAI, the ISPs have been into me as well similarly, you know what I mean? So we've listened to both sides of, of the debate on that one. Um, just in relation to this process, it's an independent process. Uh, Owen O'Dell and his team uh, have ownership of this process, if you will. Uh, he and his team formulated these questions, formulated this paper. Uh, Owen O'Dell and his team will make suggestions as to the legislative changes and then ultimately it will be a decision for government. I, I get the process and I get that we can feed into it. I am actually asking you as, as a citizen okay. to another citizen. Okay. There are a lot of interest musicians, individual, original copyright holders who are against this as artists. They own the copyright. If they submit to you that this is not something they support, okay. will you change your mind? Will you listen to anybody as citizens, as artists, as copyright holders, if the resounding result coming back from the CRC consultation process is we do not support what you have already signed into law, will you change your mind? It's a very simple yes or no question. If the vast bulk of people... Yes, if, no. If, yes, ah, no. Yes, no. But I'm, 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 no. I'm asking yes. a fundamental No, no, hold on a second. No, no, please, give, just give me a chance here on this one, OK? Please. Yeah. No, I'm not trying to tick down the, t the clock either, sir, just in case you think I'm trying to do that. But what I'm trying to do is, yeah, you have to have regard to the, the complete picture. So you, you're saying, I, like, I don't hold a brief for any one stakeholder in this process, contrary to popular opinion, okay? I really no, don't. No, that's not my okay. opinion at all. Okay. I'm contrary to popular... To all of them. Yeah, and we have to do that, yeah. and that's why I'm sitting here today. Because we've had traditional, we've had traditional modes of consultation in this country... Uh, where whole rafts of, of citizens uh, have been left out of the process. Yeah. And now we, we have three processes involved here, uh, which, I which I hope... And I think that's very healthy approach. But, which I, but I, will is, will I will listen. I will listen. What, what I want to do is I want to create a scenario here in this country where we remove any barriers to innovation. That's the process here. So if we... Yeah, but that's hold on a second. I, I, will, I, will, I will seek to, I, I want to see a liberal regime here that protects everybody, okay? I want to see democracy working. If the overwhelming, from all the yeah. individual agendas, if the overwhelming response from all of us, then... Uh, absolutely. Or, uh, if it's a no, please change your mind. Will you change your I, mind? I, I will change my mind if Great. we speak. But, 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 Thank but, you for your honesty. But, but, but I, I have to... You see, it's a, that's black and that's white, okay? Yeah. And so I Which said, is yes. what I think this debate has lacked, with the respect. Okay, but, it, but it's, there are so many different competing interests. It's such sure. a dis so many different communities here, Absolutely. if you think about it logically. Yeah. And then you've got, you've got the fact that we have to be adherent or ad idem with uh, EU legislation. So, for instance, and this is what I said at the outset, if we find that we are now ahead of the curve in terms of where the EU is, then the challenge to bring about the changes will be to bring the EU kicking and screaming into line with where we want to go on this type of legislation. And so when I answer yes, that's where I want to go, I have to make you aware of the fact that there will be challenges in the But wouldn't it be great process. to lead the EU rather than follow it in something? Well, we're, we've got the presidency of the European Union uh, in, you know, from January of next year. Okay. You know, innovation is going to, and research, for which I have particular responsibilities for, 
are going to be two key pillars that we want to drive as part of our themes. But what, what do you think I want to do as a minister? Do you think I don't? I fund the Derry Institute. I have no opinion either way. I would just ask that you yeah, listen no, it's, to it's, the voices coming back. And yeah, you've Tom, said that. Tom That's like great. It, it, it's a rhetorical okay. question. Can I, but I fund that Derry. I fund the Clarity Institute and UCD. They're all doing research in the same Can I answer way. the question that, that the lady has asked? Can I answer the question that the lady has asked? With all due respect to the minister, and I'm not referring to the minister. I'm excluding the minister now from from this answer. No, you will not get listened to. All right. And I'll tell you why you won't get listened to, because I went to the CRC meeting on the Saturday morning, right, and there was, there was 50, and I counted them, roughly 50 lobbyists, paid lobbyists, me, two librarians, and a bloke who wanted to talk about his DVD region encoding. Right? Those people are paid. Their daily job is to protect that industry. Their daily job is to lobby, lobby, lobby. Right? And when, you, when it's made to seem like we have a, a middle of the ground answer, it will be because so much has been done on their side, the 99% of the win will be on their side and the crumbs will be left to us. Like right? to because, because, and, and, uh, one second. because when we got round through the copyright holders, the, the intermediaries, the fair use, the dealing, the, a big sign came up saying, now we will talk about the users of copyright and nobody said a word. There wasn't one single person. And eventually I put up my hand and I said, I think it's instructive that there is nobody here to speak for the users. There was 80,000 people signed his um, uh, 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 petition. And it wasn't listened to. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of thousands of people angry about the banks getting like 3.1 million this month, 80 billion overall, uh, 3.1 billion overall. They're not listening to them. You think they're going to listen to you about your music? I'm sorry, they just aren't. So don't fool yourselves. So get out there, get involved in the CRC, make your voices heard as much as you can because that's the only chance we have. But don't delude yourselves that that's going to actually make a huge big difference and that it's going to win a big war. Right, this is a long, long war and we're here for the fight. Minister wants to jump in. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with the minister as well in part is he's constrained by European law. And we mustn't take our eyes off the fact that there's lots of things going on and lots of lobbying going on at a European level by the very people that Tom was talking about. And I want to bring your attention to another thing that's floating around, which is called ACTA. It's the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade yeah. Agreement, which is AI. And again, if that is passed and signed, again, Minister here is constrained by what is being dictated by the EU. So we have got to lobby as best we can as, as citizens uh, if you feel that ACTA is not right, to get in there and go f and write to your MEPs, because they're the people who can decide on this now. The, it has been provisionally signed by the European Union on our behalf, but it has to be ratified by the, by the uh, European Parliament. And that means MEPs must be convinced that the kind of things which are in ACTA, which are the sorts of things that we're talking about here, are not appropriate as we see it. So. Again, it's as Tom said, if the citizens don't say anything, nobody will be heard. Minister, last word. Yeah. I, I, I may be mistaken, uh, John, but I think this is pretty unique in, in that there is a process here where you have a minister engaging. I, I can understand your scepticism, Tom, about that process <laughs> and, and you know, w whether or not it will be listened to. But, but Paul is right, and we have to live in a real world as well. And what I mean by that is that Ireland may... Well, Ireland... Well, uh, give me a break here, one second. So Ireland may make... Ireland may decide that it wants to move in a very liberal way in terms of how we legislate for this space. Uh, but you're going to have powerful interests, powerful corporate interests, and that's the way the European Union works, who will seek to try and... Uh, you know, get into the corridors of power and try to, to, to shape that. So that's the challenge that we have. But look, if you look at it logically, I mean, we're at an interface between the US and, and, and the East. You know, the more open our economy is, uh, the, you know, the stronger the messages that we send out uh, in relation to our, our legislative regime, you know, the more favorable that's going to be in terms you of... You did sign ACTA in Japan, didn't you? No, I didn't sign ACTA in Japan. You signed uh, us up to ACTA. Pardon me? What did you do with ACTA in Japan? No, the, the government was part of ACTA. No, I didn't do anything myself, Tom. Okay. Just, so, so the government uh, signed up to ACTA, but ACTA cannot exist if it is contrary to what they call the acquis communautaire. So all of the rules, the procedures, 
the legislative uh, text that we have uh, cannot be superseded go, go by. Acta. You were in Japan, right? No, you were not in Japan. No. My apologies, I thought you were in Japan. I was in Japan once on my way to Australia, but that was it. But I didn't sign up. But I thought you would agree to sign us up to the, uh, committed to, to the ACT. No, the, the government has signed up to ACT. There's no mistake about that. I mean, you know, not going to be uh, ambiguous about that. So you're in the, you're in the government, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. No, no, well, well Tom asked Sorry, you Sorry, I, I asked you Tom specifically, Tom thought I went yeah. to Japan. I said, no, Who I didn't did sign up? Who, who has signed a sign? Committed truthfully, I, I do not the know. Local MC, local MC normally signs yeah. these things. Yeah. No, it, it's not. It's, I'm not. I'm not trying to fudge the question. I, I can get back to this, and we can tweet it back say, in. We'll find out exactly who signed acted. There's no I problem. If I may say, here. I think that what we're seeing is uh, the same pattern repeated. We have a, a pattern here, and what we have is a, a failure of government, because it, it should not be government's job to sit and wait for people to decide for them what the policy should be. The government should be the people who look after the public interest, while the commercial interests might pull here and there, make lobby and so on, but the government is meant to occupy the broad centre on behalf of the citizenry. Instead, the government has abandoned the middle. They have abandoned the fight, and they're just waiting to see what turns out from various different lobby groups and organisations pulling hither and thither. Now, we see that in, uh, in, the, in the SI, uh, where the government was given an opportunity to make a stand, a very minor stand, one which allowed it to continue to make all the moves that it wanted to move uh, in relation to taking secondary legislation. Uh, there was a draft of a, an alternative SI, which the minister says uh, was shown to the Attorney General's office, but not the Attorney General. Uh, uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, that SI uh, preserved everything that the, the government wanted to do and simply made explicit, simply made explicit the fundamental rights that the ECJ has said okay. are available. And uh, the, when the minister was bringing it in, he cited how important those fundamental rights were, but he passed up the opportunity to write them into law. The result is that Tom doesn't have the level of certainty that he would otherwise have. We don't have the level of certainty for attracting business we otherwise would have. And the courts have a headache, which they don't welcome, of interpreting legislation in the absence of uh, guidance from the laws themselves. Now, that's not a great position for the government to be in, but if it abandons the position of leadership it ought to take, that's what we will see again and again. I hope that people do uh, make uh, submissions to the CRC, but remember where those go. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to have to wind this up. Do you have a last word to say? Or? Yeah. A wonderful, I'm not being facetious, but that's a wonderful oratorical flourish there by, by Simon. Um, look, m my job here today uh, is to get stuck in, effectively. There have been very clear messages coming across. It's clear that people are well pissed off with us as a government, okay? Uh, and I, I acknowledge that. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is to try to put some sort of a structure around the engagement. I take the points that Simon is making, okay? You know, and I spoke about the broad middle uh, at the start. Do we legislate for the middle ground, that interface between the copyright holders uh, and those people who are, who are citizens? And we need to strike some sort of a balance. And we have to grapple with the problem that the ISPs and the intermediaries find themselves in at present, where they're left, if you will, on the hook. How we do that is a major challenge, okay? And how we do that, that keeps us in line with EU legislation, given the way the current uh, you know, legislation is framed around the e-commerce directive, is going to be a challenge. But like, don't think that we're not conscious of, of it. Don't think for a second uh, that you know, we're, we're just going to say, you know, sign the SI and away we go, stick the head back in the sand, and you know, that's it. We have a consultation paper. You know? That is the paper. I can put the side back up again. I can stick it up if you want. Like the one where it says that it's got nothing to do with the SI. No, 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 but you see, but this is a wider conversation I, 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 as well. I'll, I'll, I will, I'll put it back up. Come on. With respect, isn't maybe a good outcome if you're all evil said don't be in the public domain that Minister Sherlock has said 
Yes, if the resounding reaction coming back from the citizenry and the copyright holders is change it, he will change it. He I, has I said yes. I said, and I, I sat think, this morning. Okay, I sat this morning with no, you. No, but with, with, due, due, with respect as well, because I, I think what everyone here just reading and, and chatting to, to peers and stuff, what everyone wants is that the debate today isn't the same as the debate last month and the month before and the month before. We may have something to cling on to, and I think saying it, you won't be listened to might disenfranchise some citizens from having their say. No, I'm saying I would it's going to be everybody. difficult for you to be listened to. Now, you are going no, to you have said to you fight. won't be. Well, and I, I think well, with respect that the Minister has said, yes, I will listen. Minister, we vote you in. We will hold you to that answer. Yeah, and absolutely. I would encourage everyone not to be you know, put off responding because they think they won't be listened to. I think that's also counterproductive. I think we're going to all have to shout very, very loud. I but, agree. But, but I think it, it, perhaps I'm being pessimistic due to the, uh, the last two years of, of shouting very loudly about much more important issues in a sense of, of our financial situation. Um, however, I, 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 say, I wanted to say two yeah, things but before Tom, we finish. I've got to pull you up on that one because this thing landed on my desk. It's been going on since October 2010, November 2010. Okay? So... so you know, we're, we're, we've instigated a copyright review in the, in, you know, in, in less than the one year that we've been in, go or in slightly over the one year that we've been in government. Uh, we, we uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look, uh, hold on. There, there was a much Let's more. Spend another there was, a, on wait, that there was a much more important point being made here, which is that if we have the same conversation next month that we're having this month, we're having last month. Believe me, nobody, nobody in this room more than me wants to sort this problem out because I'm the one that's going to get shot. Yeah. I'm the one that's going to be nailed in court for it. Right. So I do want to solve this problem. And this morning I sat with the minister and I outlined a way that we could solve this problem, that there is a, a, a solution to this. Nobody wants to hear it, but I've been the one saying, hey, we've got copyright holders over here and we've got copy infringers here. Fine. Well, let's just make the channel between how they get to them and punish them for their misdeeds a lot more straightforward. Now, the people here don't want that to happen because there's people who are nicking films and, and, and music and, oh, we don't want to really give that up. And there's people over here who don't want to do that because there's a lot of those people. Right? They don't want to chase them all down. It's much easier to shoot me. I'm one guy. Right? And that will shut up a, a bunch of people. So get Kim.com. Shoot him in the head. Hey, you, you took care of a whole load of copyright uh, infringers. But if we continue that way, along with all the copyright infringers, goes all the people who have freedom of speech, all the people who want to use copyright, uh, copy material in interesting fair use, fair dealing ways, etc. All the conduits of, of publication go too, because they'd just be too scared of getting shot in the head. I've said it before. Uh, in China, if you stand on a soapbox and, and criticize the government, they shoot you. Fair enough. Okay, grand. Right. In Ireland, they shoot the guy who made the soapbox. Right. <laughs> Pretty soon, Nobody makes soapboxes in this country, or if they do, they make damn sure they don't leave their sight. I'll come back and that. that's the chilling effect. Tom, you've been in business for, what, 12, 15 years on Boards.ie? 22 IE? years, but 12 or On boards. Boards. Yes. Okay, you're still going. Because you're going, I fight. You've got... <laughs> <laughs> Ask no. MCD. Yeah, no, fair play. <laughs> you've, got, you've got two million, two million unique users and you haven't gone out of business yet. <coughs> Correct. Okay? And the copyright legislation has been in existence. The copyright legislation... You know no, why? Hold on, Tom. Go on. Hold on. We haven't been, been sued yet. But. You haven't been sued yet. You know why? And, uh, but listen to the point that I'm trying to make. Because, so, so what you have said to me this morning was that there has been an exponential increase in, in the growth of your business. Right? It's becoming increasingly more precarious. You've got to put a war chest together to defend against you know, a potential Correct. onslaught. And so now the legislation arguably uh, enables is that. outmoded in, in that sense. It, it enables needs to be. That. It, it enables it, it. It's an enabling feature of it, OK? Correct. But the challenge then is, for us, is how we meet your rights as an intermediary and we meet the rights of the copyright holders as well. So you have to have regard to that as well. And the rest of us. Well, and, and citizens, and but, but that's inherent. Citizens are, inherent. citizens are if protected. If we're not heard, we're not there. Well, we're listening to you now, Simon, you know what I mean? This is part of the engagement, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I don't need to be told that. No, no, I, I, I don't ignore the people who represent me. I mean, I put my name, but I, I put my name on a ballot paper and I subscribe to a legislative or an elective democratic process and the people will judge me on that one. But hold on a second, because, because a comment was made. I, a comment, oh, that's not helpful either. A comment was made about, about our, our, my company, which is the biggest intermediary effectively in the state, uh, 
um, not being sued. The reason why we came out uh, so strongly against the SI, even though we had had a conversation where you said, I'm signing it anyway. I was in Malta and you spoke to me on the mobile phone. And you said in the doll, I was always going to sign it anyway, right, before the debate. Right? So, wait a second. The, 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 the reason why we came out fighting against that SI is because we ran out into the public and made it very clear. It would be an enormous toxic political football now if somebody was, like EMI was to come along and slap us with an injunction. It would just play so badly given what I've said and what, what we've shown and, what, and, and, the, and the argument that made. The only reason we're not getting injuncted, the only reason we're not getting slapped is because it would just become a much bigger deal as a result of the publicity that we've given it. Right? It's been a strategy of mine to make this a big deal so that we can run to the, to literally to the, the mob as the Romans would have and, and shout and say, please don't let us get nailed. Okay, one last really quick point. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that's true. I mean, I, I understand the, the rhetoric, rhetoric around it. I understand what you're saying, that you, you shout loud enough, nobody's going to go near you, and you've had an experience of that in the past. So, lots of I, them. I think it's closer to reality to say that, you know, why would somebody go after boards.ie as an intermediary if, all, if, if I sign up to boards.ie, there are strict guidelines around behaviour, as to how I, you know, interact Sean, with boards. But bear with me, Tom. EMI with sued a country. Bear, bear with me. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but, but, but what makes you think they won't come after a small five-person company? So, but, but, but what you have to have regard to the fact, I take the point, but you have to have regard Good, to the I'm fact... Good, I'm glad. I live no, with it. Hold on a second now. That as, as an intermediary, you have rights by virtue of the e-commerce directive. Isn't that disgraceful that our answer to our own bad laws to say it's okay, Europe will save you. That's not good enough. That, no, no, you're, no, you're really getting rhetorical. No, but that is because not good. That's you what you just said was run no, to Europe, I, I, they'll I, I, save you from our bad to, law. We have to, no, we have subscribed to that and the e-commerce directive is something that we subscribe to on a voluntary basis by virtue of our membership. Believe me, I know the e-commerce directive. We have it nailed on the wall and every day is like, love you, you know, because it's our protection. Right? No, but it's I, true. I like, are, from the sublime note to the ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous. You're this saying that... that, 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 that yeah. well, wait, you said that we should go to... We're covered by Sabama and European law, and that protects us from Irish no, law, no, from, mean, from the, the, from the, the, the vagaries of Irish law. As an intermediary, you have... Uh, protection in European law yeah. because we don't have it in Irish. No, you, if you have I, it in I'll your... Put, I, 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 don't, you have make, it, don't make no, me no, do no, it. No, no. Don't make me put the slide back up where if it says a, that you can sue an intermediary no, in this I, country. I think, I think you should have a little bit of respect now as well. I think if you're an, internet, an intermediary, right, there is a body of law. It's the e-commerce directive. If you go through the e-commerce directive, it gives rights to... Correct your entity to be able to conduct your business. What does the E stand in, in EC, like European Collective? I mean, it's the EC uh, e-commerce directive. Right? It's the European EU e-commerce directive. Right? It's, it's, it's European law. Right? It protects us from, from Irish law. Right? From, no, from no, that's not no, true. No, it doesn't protect no. you. Be it careful. Here, no. line of defense, yes, a line of defense, <laughs> uh, which is actually worse, because we have to activate that in court. That's the big problem. And, that, and yeah. there are members who have actually been sued at this stage, two of them, uh, to, uh, to, to actually do something, and that's they're actually acting as a buffer. So it's even worse because it's even more blanket because we can get injunctions against our members for things which aren't even <coughs> in this state as well, uh, which has already happened. So, uh, and that is exactly what ACTA is bringing in even more powerfully, trying to write that into code that an ISP or other intermediary can actually have an action taken against it for something that might be happening this, in a completely different This country. SI and this whole argument that's, that's happening, sorry, to, uh, I want to support yeah. your point. This whole SI and this argument that's happening is a raindrop in the storm that is coming, right? So understand that this is the smallest part of the beginning of the control of the internet and your ability to access it unfetteredly. Right. It is that's not nonsense. Yeah, and nonsense. in five years' time, I will sit here and tell you that this that's, was not nonsense. That's nonsense. It is not the whole thing. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Okay, guys, we don't have to wind down now. Do you want to make the last point, Simon? Uh, I should say, um, I set up, uh, uh, at the suggestion of um, my web developer, Sabrina Dent, the, uh, the petition site. And, um, and I asked people to sign the petition because I thought this was a bad law. Now, the law is passed now. There will be more bad laws in the future if we don't get our voices heard sooner. Now, 
Digital Rights Ireland, whom I represent, though not in this area, uh, 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 wrote to the, uh, the Minister's predecessor in 2010 and asked for a meeting uh, on this SI when it was in its gestation period. Uh, we never got an answer back. Other people got meetings. Uh, I can tell you that the, um, that the, 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 the effort of bringing this up into the public domain was not inconsiderable, and Tom has ref referred to that as well. This is a technical issue. But I can tell you that the reason that people are worked up about it, I put my hand up on that, worked up about it is, this is not a technical matter. This is a matter relating to our society. And it's local and it's global. And unless the populace, the people in the country, are engaged with this issue, unless we realize what it is that those lobbyists are paid to speak for and provide a counterweight in our own voices, we will not like what comes out the other end of those sausage machines. And the minister has made it clear in his acts and his deeds that we cannot rely on him to protect our interests without our voices being heard. So I would ask you, please stay engaged, stay listening to what's happening, and stay talking. Thank you. Uh, I know John is about to wrap up. Um, I, I just want to say, say thanks genuinely to everybody that has shown up here. Uh, I want to say thanks to the guys here for the robust debate, OK? Uh, what we have to do now is maybe continue the engagement, absolutely to continue the engagement and keep the conversation open with the ISPAI, with people like Boris, with people like Simon as well, uh, and to see where we can go on this one. Uh, in relation to the consultation, you know, we are going to listen on the consultation. If we didn't want to listen, we would have just instigated, you know, legislation and be done with it, if you will. You know, and what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do, what, what, well, if you, if you go back and look at ACTA, and ACTA cannot be outside of what is already in what they call the Aki Communitaire, okay? I've said that already. So I've said that already, okay? So, but look, all I want to say is that uh, people have to ask themselves what kind of internet they want, do they believe in copyright, if they, you know, what type of legislation should be framed around where we need to go as a country. And look, I'm looking at the tweets here and I can understand that people are, you know, you know have, it, have it in for the government on this one. But really, genuinely, what we are trying to do uh, is to try and, you know, hear your voices on this one and see where we can go from there and maybe move into a more positive space and a more consensus-driven space about, you know, how we shape legislation into the future. I actually think also, if I may say this, that I think people need to, uh, sometimes within the online community, people are, you know, they're, they're very big egos when they're, you know, behind their own screens in their own houses. Uh, and, and I think people need to, I think people need to park the egos, including ourselves in government, and to engage, okay? And I say that genuinely, uh, because what I found is that sometimes the most vitriolic of comments that are made uh, through Twitter, when you actually, in, you know, to people like myself, when you end up meeting the people, you find that they're thoroughly nice people and, you, you know, that there's a whole negativity around the debate that doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to be personal is what I'm saying in effect. So I, I, I'm, I'm thick-skinned. I'm a government minister. That's my job. But what I really want to do is I want to ensure that we can try and move into a space where we're, we're talking to each other at least. Okay, guys, we're going to have to wind it up. Um, We're probably about 20 minutes over time, but I, I think everybody has been given a chance to say what they want to say, and I, I, I would hope we probably have something like this again. I think it's been very valuable, so thanks again, guys.